And uh, the most important thing is to please put your cell phone on silent so that it won't disturb our seminar. And I would like to say good evening also to our viewers the, in Facebook, in uh, Twitter, or Messenger. Good evening to all. Uh, this is our last uh, uh, few days of our seminar. Uh, we will be ending on Saturday. And we also have, I would like to mention, we also have prayer warriors that been, that's been set up so that they will be praying hard for our interests, that they will be able to accept the Lord uh, in this few days of our seminar. And that would be uh, the final day on, on, on Saturday. And uh, I'm glad that we moved here from uh, Collingwood. Yeah. And what a big relief for us. And uh, now I uh, would like to mention our uh, program for this evening. Uh, we have our opening song, which is um, When We All Get to Heaven. I bet you uh, all memorized this song already after uh, 25 days of singing, right? And then we have the, uh, the opening song. Uh, this would be rendered by uh, our very own uh, ladies from uh, uh, Burnaby Philcon. Uh, uh, Star, Jenny, and Myrna. These are the unique voices of uh, Burnaby Felcan. So they were be, uh, uh, sent here to do the praise team. And also uh, the opening prayer uh, will be offered to us by our very own um, brother, uh, Melchor Calaramo. And um, also uh, we have the special music. It's very special because we have the, uh, what we call our very own Tres uh, Mercados. Mer Tres Mercados because their last name is Mercado. It's not that uh, they just name it for something, but uh, this is composed of the father and two sons. Not the prodigal sons, but they are the Tres Mercados that will be performing the uh, special music yeah. and uh, that's our program this evening and after that um, we will hear from our senior pastor of course uh, Pastor Liumar Makarai a very talented pastor we learned so much for the 25 days of uh, lecturing yeah. and uh, you know, if I there's a chance that I could be uh, rebaptized, I'm gonna do so. So for those who are really uh, willing and uh, be able to accept Christ, this is the time. We have three more days left after this. So uh, we will pray hard. Those prayer warriors are praying so hard for our interest. So at this moment. I speak too much. I would like to call our uh, Tres Marias from uh, Burnaby Felcan. This is our. Uh, uh, please come up here and uh, do uh, our theme song when we all get to heaven. And I would like to invite each one to please rise so that we can glorify God with our beautiful voices.
Let us pray. Our most gracious, kind, Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, with heartfelt thanks for the wonderful blessings we receive day by day. You have blessed us, Lord, with good health and strength and keeping us safe every day. Even in providing our daily needs in life, thank you for the physical and spiritual healings for those who are still sick. Tonight, Lord, we thank you that we are all gathered here once again to come and continue listening and gaining more knowledge and understanding on the beautiful topic that we're going to have tonight. And as we go on, Lord, I pray for the Holy Spirit to be upon each one of us, open our hearts and mind, and ready to receive the Word of God. In a very special way, I'd like to pray for Pastor Leomar as he talk on his topic tonight. Please be with him, Lord. Fill him with your Holy Spirit, with thorough knowledge and wisdom. Bless us, O Lord, even our viewers online. Forgive us, Lord, for all our sins. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Sing you all. 
Thank you once again, uh, Mercado family or Tres Mercados. What is uh, what is the meaning of Mercados in Spanish? Store? Market? Wow. That's good. Thank you. Praise the Lord for that, uh, Mercado family. This is our 26th night. And we are nearing home, right? Tonight's topic is about this uh, shocking uh, discovery because shocking, um, because many people will not be ready when they hear the pronouncement of God in the last days. Uh, they think that they were okay, but in the last days, they will find out that they will not. <laughs> That's why it is shocking. Shocking sometimes for some people. Uh, last year, or maybe a couple of years ago, they were strong and healthy. Then after doctor appointment, doctor's appointment, they were shocked because they are not healthy. There are many things that actually shock us and caught us surprised because of the things that we didn't expect. So tonight is one of the uh, topic that I'd like to share with you. And this is based on the book of Revelation. So let's start again with the message of uh, the first angel. All right, if that's working, then I will read from the book of uh, Revelation 14. It's not working with me. Revelation 14, verse 6. And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to them that dwell on the earth, 
and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. So this is Revelation 14, verse 6 and 7. Now, according to this passage, you will see here that part of the message of the first angel is about what? About judgment. Okay? About judgment because this is the last message to be given to the world. Part of the uh, third angel, or so three angels. And in this uh, context, when you read chapter... Uh, 16, 17, and 18, okay, that is the judgment against the, uh, the mystery Babylon, okay, the great, the, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. You can read it in chapter 17. And then 19, chapter 19, is about the harvest of the earth. So this is the last message to be given to the world, and part of it is judgment. Now in chapter 15, who shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you only are holy. For all nations shall come and worship before you. For your judgments are made manifest. If you have your New American Standard uh, Bible, it says there that your judgment have been manifested or revealed. So this is... Chapter 14, 6 and 7, and then chapter 15 is about the manifestation or revelation of the judgment of God. And in this judgment, it says in verse 5, And after that I look, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony, and heaven was opened. That's why I entitled this shocking discovery, because for some people, they always preach and share with conviction that there's no Ten Commandments. That Ten Commandments is not for us. That we don't need the Ten Commandments. Shocking to them because according to the book of Revelation 15 and the verses 5, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened because in verse 4, this is about his judgments. Your judgments are made manifest or revealed. What is the tabernacle? A dwelling place. So this is a dwelling place of the testimony. This is in heaven. Now it is opened. When you look at your Bible in chapter 15, and you will see chapter 16, this is about the seven angels with the seven vials of wrath of God upon the earth. Okay? And then chapter 17 is about the judgment of the great Babylon. 17 verse 1, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials that talked with me, saying to me, Come here, I will show you the judgment of the great whore that sits upon many waters. So that's why the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. This is not the first time that the book of Revelation mentioned that, and I do believe this is also mentioned in the book of uh, Revelation chapter 11 verse 9 and the temple of God was opened in heaven and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament or the covenant and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and earthquake and great hail now we will take a look later why sometimes the ark of the testament or a tabernacle of testimony this is Revelation chapter 11, verse 19. Because in chapter 12, this commandment is connected with the remnant church. Okay? Let me go back a little bit. Chapter 10, the last verse. 
Verse 11, And he said to me, You must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. When you know your Bible and the history of the church, this verse 9 and verse 10 of chapter 10 is about the great disappointment. Bitter in, uh, in belly, okay? Uh, sweet as honey in my mouth. And as soon as had, I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said to me, you must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues. In our history, we call this the great disappointment. Chapter 11, there are two witnesses here. They will prophesy using the two witnesses in chapter 11, which is the word of God. And then by studying the word of God, they found out that, uh, let me repeat chapter 11, verse 1 first. And there was given me a reed like a rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. Part of the message you must prophesy again is the measurement or the study of the temple of God, which is in our history, this is the sanctuary. The great disappointment and then the sanctuary. Okay? Because the Bible says, you must prophesy again. And was given me a, re a reed like to a rod. And the angel stood saying, rise and measure the temple of God. So the great disappointment. And then we understood the sanctuary. And then chapter 11 verse 19 is about the commandments of God. Connected to chapter 12, which is the remnant church. And the remnant church, according to verse 17, the dragon was angry with the woman, the church, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, now connected to, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Chapter 13, about the two beasts. Now we read in chapter 14, 6, and 7, and we are now in chapter 15, which is verse 5, again, after that I look and behold the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. It was sandwich. Okay? 15.5 and 11, verse 19. So chapter 12, chapter 13, chapter 14, the opening of the Ten Commandments, again here, the uh, the seeing of the the uh, tabernacle of the testimony. Why I said Ten Commandments? Here is the supporting text for that. And you shall put into the ark the testimony that I shall give you. And you shall put the mercy seat above upon the ark. And in the ark you shall put the testimony that I shall give you. That's why it is called the ark of the testimony or sometimes Ark of the Covenant. And Moses turned and went down from the mount, and the two tables of the testimony were in his hand. The tables were written on both their sides, and on the one side and on the other were they written. And the tables were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God, Grieven upon the tables, and you shall put therein the ark of what? The ark of the testimony, and cover the ark with a veil. And he took and put the testimony into the ark, and set the staves on the ark, and put the mercy seat above upon the ark. That's why in Revelation 15, verse 5, let me read that again. And after that I look and behold the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. That's why this is a shocking truth for some people because some people keep on preaching and sharing with conviction that the commandments of God are done away with. We don't need the commandments of God. Shocking to them, 
Because before the coming of Jesus Christ, John saw the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven. It was opened. The temple of the tabernacle of the testimony. Because 15 verse 4 is about the manifestation of the judgment of God. Now when we look at Romans 14 verse 12, so then each of us shall give account of himself to God. We studied this uh, last week. For he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now, if you commit no adultery, yet if you kill, you are become what? A transgressor of the law. That is very clear. And then verse 12, so speak you, and so, so do as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Shocking. It is really shocking. Because they keep on telling us, oh, we don't need to obey the commandments of God. These people, they're trying to, let's say, impose their understanding to us. And they misrepresent the church. I'll give you an example. They will say, the Seventh-day Adventists, they need to keep the commandments in order for them to be saved. <laughs> they always misrepresent us. They do not know the word of God, actually. They do not know what we believe. What we believe, according to the Bible, our obedience is the manifestation of we being saved in Christ. Because there is no Christian who claim to be in Christ and keep on transgressing. That's why according to Paul, he will punish those, especially we were before, before Gentiles, we were sons of disobedience. I think I explained this uh, a couple of weeks ago. But anyway, we shall be judged by the law of liberty. You, Romans 2, that make your boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonor you, God. It's in, uh, this sentence is on uh, like a question. But when we say in a plain statement, you that make your boast of the law, through breaking of the law, you dishonor God. So when people break the law, they dishonor God. And in fact, when I read Romans chapter 2, and this is part of the Ten Commandments. You sh Ten Commandments, you shall not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Because sometimes you commit blasphemy. Right? But in Romans chapter 2, let me read that. That is verse 23. Let me check my Bible here. Let me see if I have that. Chap that is chapter 2, verse 23. And then 24 for the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you as it is written. Why blasphemed? Because in verse 21, you therefore which teach another, teach you not yourself, you that preach a man should not steal, do you steal? So these people who boast in the law, when they break the law, they dishonor God. And because of that, uh, the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles. It's just like in our situation. If those Christians claiming, oh, we are believing in God, we believe in the Bible, you know, we are Christians, but keep on breaking the message of God, breaking the law, because they don't believe in the law. <laughs> it's a blasphemous thing, actually. Now, when we look at Matthew 7, 21, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. 
Oh, some people will just jump to the Old Testament and say, the will of God is the commandments of God. I delight to do thy will, O God. Yes, thy law is in my heart. They try always to connect the law. But when you look at the New Testament, especially in the book of John, what is the will of God? Let me find that verse. If not, then uh, I will skip it. Okay, because this is not part of my, <laughs> my presentation. All right, chapter, is this chapter 5? Okay, chapter 6. Okay, chapter 6. Verse 39 and 40. And this is the Father's will, which has sent me, that of all which he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up against the last day, or again the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which sees me, which sees the Son, and believes on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last days. What is the will of the Father? To believe in Jesus Christ. So, but he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Okay? Because many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And in your name have cast out devils, and in your name done many wonderful works. That's why beware of miracles that people are trying to claim that they have done this by the will and power of God, and sometimes they insist this is the works of the Holy Spirit. But Jesus Christ said, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. <laughs> but Jesus Christ will say to them, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you depart from me. Second shocking discovery. Many people will think that in the last days, they have done many wonderful things in the name of Christ. Because Jesus Christ said in his uh, teaching, uh, many people will ask, when will, when will we see, when we see you hungry and sick and poor? Jesus Christ said, no, you, you actually visited me. And because of that statement, uh, this is the warning of Jesus Christ, not all these things, okay, are actually accepted by my Father. Because actually, I never know them. That's why he said, then I will de declare to them, I never knew you, depart from me, you who practice Lawlessness. What is lawlessness? There. Sin is lawlessness. Now, if you have the King James uh, version, and let me check my, my Bible here, I think the wording there is iniquity. Huh? You who practice iniquity because the Greek word can be translated iniquity or sin or lawlessness 723 yes iniquity or lawlessness now this lawlessness according to 1 John 3 4 Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. What Jesus Christ was trying to say, I never knew you because you are committing sin. You are continuing in sinning. 
or in lawlessness. Okay? And that is the sad fact. That was shocking. That, that will be a shocking to some people because they think that they serve or do service to Jesus Christ by doing miracles and commanding evil spirits to come out of people's body. But Jesus Christ said, I never knew you depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. And sin is lawlessness. Okay? Now, in King James, 1 John 3, 4 says, A sin is the transgression of the law. Meaning these people are doing good, but they keep on transgressing the law. That's, that's the meaning of that. Now in 1 John 3, 5, the last reading is 1 John 3, 4. 1 John 3, 5 says, And you know that he was manifested or revealed to take away our sins. And in him there is no sin, meaning in Christ. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Why? Because the answer is there. In him, there is no sin. If you abide in him, you do not sin. Okay? Because you are in him. When you go out of him, you are living in sin. That produces many sins. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Now, th that word, whoever sins, is an active, um, is a present, oh, let me say this, present active. It is present and still going. Okay? Progressive, that's it. Present progressive, whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. And there's a reason why, why like that. 1 John 3, 7. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices, that is present progressive, present active. I forgot my Greek here. We have a Greek there, present active indicative. All right. Present progressive. He who practices righteousness is righteous. Just he is righteous. The other one is, he that commits sin is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. It is a present progressive. He that commits sin. Even in Tagalog Bible, when you, when you read Tagalog Bible, huh? siya na nagkakasala. Hindi nagkasala or magkakasala. Siya na nagkakasala Ay saan? Sa demonyo. <laughs> he that commits sin is of the devil. Present progressive. Meaning that's his lifestyle. Okay? For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now, what is the works of the devil? There. Because he's, he's been sinning from the beginning. And whoever commits sin, there you go. When we go back a little bit here, where is that? He that commits sin is of the devil. But Jesus Christ was manifested, according to the Bible, that he might destroy the works of the devil. And the works is the devil is Sinning. Meaning when Christ was manifested, uh, he destroys the continuous transgression of men. That's why when we go back to Matthew chapter 7, even though these people were committing many wonderful things, Jesus Christ said, I never knew you because you are committing lawlessness. You keep on transgressing. <laughs> and many people, uh, 
believe on the so-called preaching that ah, as long as you're in Christ, no matter what you do, you are fine. And not only that, but they changed the law. Right? That's why we started that we are in the truth. Okay? What are the truth? Jesus Christ is the truth. John 14, 6. John 17, 17. Thy word is truth. Psalm 119, 142. Thy law is truth. 151 verse. Thy commandments are truth. And Satan wants to destroy all those things. So, he changed the commandments. He twists the word of God. And he tried to destroy Jesus Christ. Because every time we presented the truth, the kingdom of darkness always crumbles. And Satan doesn't want to hear that. That's why he is at war with the remnant of the woman which keep the commandments of God because they have the truth. And when Jesus Christ was manifested, one of his duty was to destroy the works of the devil and that is committing sins. That's why when you are in him, we go back again, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Okay? There's a suddenly change. You're not continuing in sin anymore and you, and you take your refuge in him because in him there is no sin. If you are in him, you are fine. If you are out of him, you are not fine. <laughs> it's simple as that. Okay? That's why in the book of Revelation, the ark of the testimony was opened because there's a judgment. It was shocking. Oh, people were shocked because they thought that uh, commandments are no longer valid. <laughs> now, Titus 1.16 they profess that they know God, just like in Matthew 7, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. You will see a lot of this, you will see a lot of people, okay? Uh, I forgot to mention, let me check. Uh, this is Titus, right? Uh, let me check. Timothy. Oh, same thing. Timothy chapter 4. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits in the doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy. Uh, if you have your Bible, turn, turn your Bible with me to 1 Timothy chapter 4 and the verses 2. Because they use this passage against us. Okay? Because they said, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with hot iron, verse 3, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods or from meats, which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Now, I'll give you Bible study for, for a short time here. <laughs> they always use this passage, 1 Timothy chapter 4, that our teachings of forbidding to eat uh, unclean animals is according to them, is doctrine, one of the doctrines of devils. Because they read this part. Okay? When you look at your Bible, I'm using... Uh, uh, King James is a reading here. In verse 
3, it says, forbidding to marry. I think this is not us. <laughs> and then, and commanding to abstain from meats or foods, which God has created to be received with thanksgiving to them, which believe and know the truth. Right. You know, I answer this. And you can, you can practice this. All right. And commanding to abstain from meats. That is King James. But there is also a meaning there, foods, in my Bible. So, foods. Now, my answer, when, when, when one guy asked me about this, I said, okay, the, the, the text is right. I praise the Lord for this text. But I think your understanding is, that is, that is uh, problematic. That is uh, not in connection with the passage, right? Why? He asked me. And I said, because... It says, and commanding to abstain from foods. Now, when we go back to the Bible, who commanded to eat foods? Okay, let, let us read. <laughs> let us turn. Uh, because it says there, of them which believe and know the truth. So, let's go to the first beginning. Who commanded to eat foods? Okay. Now, chapter 2 uh, of Genesis, uh, chapter 1, verse 29. God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you, it shall be for food. Who said that? God. Okay? This passage in 1 Timothy says, commanding to abstain from food. It means that if you teach people to abstain from the food that God gave, that is the doctrines of the devil. What is the original food? Seed. Herb bearing seed and tree, which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you, it shall be for food. And yet you are telling people, oh, you don't need to be vegetarian. That is the doctrine of the devils. <laughs> because God is the author of this body. He knows what is best. That's why it says there in 1 Timothy 4, verse 3, of them which believe and know the truth. It doesn't say pig or rats or snakes. No. It's food. And from the very beginning, God already said, this is, shall be, this shall be food for you. And what is the conclusion of God? And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And then you are forbidding, forbidding people to abstain from food. So who is now uh, adhering to the doctrines of the devil? Shocking! Ha! <laughs> Shocking discovery. And when you go to the doctor, the doctor will tell you, hey, don't eat fat. It's not good for your heart. Arthritis and everything, cholesterol. And, and then you listen. Why? Because you want to live and enjoy Canadian life. <laughs> now, when God said, this is the best food for you, ah, only Seventh-day Adventists, who said that? Ah, who said? You read Genesis, God said, not Seventh-day Adventist. And they will say, that's why you are Seventh-day Adventist. Seventh-day Adventist, it means sad. Seventh-day Adventist. <laughs> you are sad people, you don't eat anything. Oh, no. Shocking discovery. But this, they profess that they know God, but in their works, they deny him. You know, you know people, right? You know this, this, this people, 
where before they come to church, if they want to smoke, they smoke outside of the church vicinity. And then after maybe two cigarettes, they, they enter the church. All right. And after the church, they, they, what do you call this? They use profane language. <laughs> By their works, they deny him. They profess that they know God, but in their works, they deny him. Right? While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. What does it mean? You read in IV, it is very clear, or in other translation, okay? Whatever overcomes you, you are slaves of that. But these people, they promise liberty. Ah, oh, they say, we are sons of God. We are led by the Spirit of God. We are not under the condemnation of the law. I said, praise the Lord. We are not under the condemnation of the law because we are in Christ. And then they explain, we don't need the law for salvation. Oh, that is right. Our salvation is not based on the law. It is the, the basis is Jesus Christ. But what we are trying to say is, if we are in Christ, what is the reason why Christ was manifested? To destroy the works of the devil. To destroy the life of sinning. Meaning the result of being in Christ is being obedient. That is the result. Oh, let me tell you the analogy of Paul here. I, I wrote it down. It's over there, but <laughs> let me see if I can I can memorize that one. Chapter chapter four of Romans, verse eleven. It's not in here. Four eleven. And he who is that he that is Abraham received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe. Though they be not circumcised, the righteousness might be imputed to them also. Now, let me repeat that part. And he received the sign of circumcision, because before he was not circumcised, right? Now he received the sign of circumcision, that receiving of the sign of circumcision, that is a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet being as circumcised. Do you get the idea there? And in the same way, okay, when we receive the gift of salvation, that our obedience, righteousness, only a seal, it is a manifestation of the faith we had, our obedience. That's why I, I presented to you in Romans, this is the obedience of faith. Okay? Now, it says there, let me check my Bible here. Chapter 2, verse 25. For circumcision only profits, or verily profits, if you keep the law. But if you be a breaker of the law, your circumcision is made uncircumcision. <laughs> so what's the seal of circumcision? It says there, chapter 4 again, He received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had yet being uncircumcised. Even though you are circumcised 100 times, but if you are a breaker of the law, circumcision is nothing. Even though you claim that you are in Christ and believe in Christ, but by your works you deny him, your claim is nothing. That is the idea there. That's why they promise them liberty, but they themselves are the servants of corruption because they are slaves of the one that overcome them. Now, 
For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. What is the other word for lasciviousness? Check other translation. And denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And I will prepare my Bible here in Romans chapter 6. They <clears throat> turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. I call this as a, uh, like a ticket. A ticket to commit sin. Oh, we are saved by grace. And then say, yes, it's like a license to sin. We are saved by grace. We can do whatever we want, even though we drink a lot of wine and do these things because we are saved. We are sealed by the Holy Spirit until the end of time. We are saved. Oh, that's the thing. They use the grace of God into lasciviousness, rudeness. Because by their works, they deny him. Now, chapter 6 of Romans, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? And that is why we, when we accepted Christ, our old nature our old natures are gone. New has come. We are new. Who is the best example? Uh, you talk to Brother Leon and he will tell you. <laughs> talk to some people and he will tell you. That is the thing. Okay? We do not continue in sinning. Right? What well, well, Revelation 21? All right. Jude all right, Revelation 20. And I saw an angel come down from heaven. Shocking discovery. Because you will see here in Revelation 20 one more thing. And having the key of the bottomless pit in a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. What was the last uh, message Sunday night? We were in heaven, and the earth is shaking. No people, because all are dead, still remain in the grave. What will happen to Satan? This earth will be a prison cell, jail, and will bound him a thousand years while we are in heaven. And cast him into the bottomless pit, the abusos, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till or until the thousand years should be fulfilled. In other translation, expired. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. After the one thousand years. And I saw thrones, there we go again, and they set upon them, and judgment was given unto them. So while we are in heaven, okay, this, the word they, these are the saved people who are in heaven, and they were given judgment, okay? We will ask question, who, why, this brother, this friend of mine is not with us, okay? We will see everything, all right? Now, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads uh, or in their hands, and they live and reign with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. So what does it mean? It means that uh, during 1,000 years, the rest of the dead will remain dead in the grave. Okay? 
but they will rise again after the 1,000 years. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So that is our goal. That is the, the, the plan of God for us to have part in the first resurrection. Okay? And when we have uh, part in the first resurrection, then we will reign with Christ for a thousand years in heaven. Okay? Verse 7 and 8. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners quarters of the earth. Why he, why, why he will deceive the four the, the nations? Because this is after 1,000 years, meaning the rest of the dead are alive again. Okay? To gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Oh, can you imagine how, how, how many people will not be saved? As the sand of the sea, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. I don't know. Uh, if I were only a, a billionaire, I will give you one million dollars. Your work is to count five trucks load of sand. <laughs> I didn't know how. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> I'll give you one million dollar. <laughs> I don't know how can you do that. <laughs> can you? There's only five trucks load of, of sand. Can you imagine the number of whom is as the sand of the sea? Now, I will give you five billion dollars if I were a billionaire. And I will let you count the numbers of the sand of the sea of Vancouver Island. There, the whole, <laughs> the whole island. I don't know you can do that. Maybe your granddaughters is already on the grave and you're still counting. <laughs> can you imagine this number of people? There's a lot. That's a lot of people. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compass the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, that is the new Jerusalem, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. You have to watch this statement, okay? Fire came down from God out of heaven and devour them. I want you to understand that because many people believe in hell. Okay? And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophets are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Okay? So where did the, this fire came come from yes the concept of hell burning hell in the bible is in the last days there is no hell now all will go to the grave and wait for the judgment if, if you have eternal life you will be resurrected if you don't have eternal life you will remain in the grave you will be resurrected after the millennial judgment and then when you see, when we see, or not the, when, when people see the holy city, they will surround the city and try to conquer the city. But fire came down from heaven. That's the hell. Okay? And this is the lake of fire and brimstone. Now, and a so great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no more place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, 
stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. Now, what are the other books? In here in Malachi, we have what we call the book of remembrance. And in this book of remembrance, they that feared the Lord spoke often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. Oh, I have this uh, sanctified imagination, okay? There are things in the Bible, especially in the book of Revelation, like the great multitudes. Where did they come from? Part of the great multitudes are these people that fear the Lord. Because God says, they shall be mine. Because it is written in the book of remembrance, okay? In that day when I make up my jewels and I will spare them as a man spares his own son that serves him. And the dead, let's go back to Revelation 20, were judged out of those things which written in the books according to their works. Shocking revelation for some people. Oh my God, I thought it is by faith. Why my judgment is based on my works? Oh, Paul explained this very well. It is the obedience of faith. Faith is, faith is an active faith. It is alive. Faith without works is dead, according to James. That's why I always said this, that our obedience is the result of our faith which we had in Christ. Because many people will say in, my, in the last day, Lord, Lord, eh, we don't prophesy in your name. We know you. But Jesus Christ said, I never knew you. You who practice lawlessness. And what is lawlessness? Oh, Pastor Yomar preached on that and you never listen. Sin is lawlessness. Jesus Christ was manifested to take away the works of the devil. And that is sinning because he has been sinning from the beginning. And now shocking to them because it is based on works. Even us who boast on the law. But if we keep on sinning, I mean living in sin. Oh, Adventist during Sabbath. But one, two, three, four, five, six. No, not Adventist. <laughs> Adventist only on the seventh day. Oh, you cannot escape the, the judgment of God. According to the Bible, you're a breaker of the law. That's why Paul says, those people who are living in sin, Romans chapter 1, beginning from verse 18. Romans chapter 2, you who keep on judging those people, and you who commit the same thing, you cannot escape the judgment of God. Chapter, chapter 2 says, you are inexcusable, you are not excused. Chapter 3, uh, chapter 2, verse 17, you who boast about the, about, boast about the law, and you keep on transgressing the law. What is the... Summary of, of Paul there. Jews and Gentiles alike are all under sin because all sin. That's why for us, when people keep on saying, you Seventh-day Adventist, okay? Uh, I, I heard this. I saw this in YouTube. You keep your salvation by obeying the law. Oh, who told you? <laughs> you are misrepresenting us. The teaching of the Bible which we follow is this. We keep our salvation if we keep in Christ. That's we keep and how we keep the salvation. Okay? Second, it is not he, it is not we that keep our salvation. It is he <laughs> that keeps my salvation. Because he saved me by grace, my response is obedience. 
That's the thing you, you, that some people don't get it. That's why it is shocking to them because the judgment is here according to the works and those things were written in the books. That's why shocking. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, even those who died during Titanic. Those people who died in the sea. Here. And death and hell. Can you imagine hell? And hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. Now, let, let us read this part. Okay, the hell and death in hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Which is bigger, hell or the lake of fire? I think the lake of fire because hell were cast into the lake of fire. Because the understanding of hell of some people were based on tradition, on mythology, Greek mythology. It is not based on the Bible. That once you die and you are a sinner, you go straight to hell. No, in the Bible it is not. You go straight to the grave. In the last days, here in the judgment after millennium, even hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I think this is very clear for us that when God will judge us, it is based on our works. It's very clear in the Bible. Because many people claim that they believe in God, they belong to God, but in their works they deny Him. And we study this, what is the title? Confirmation and what? Vindication. James 2 is about confirmation of our faith. Okay? Romans 2 is vindication. Those who obey the law shall be justified. When? Verse 16. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men according to my gospel. It's vindication. Who will be vindicated? Those who obey the law. Let me read that. Many those who are watching may think that I am only... Uh, saying my own my own words <laughs> that's what, even though uh, we can present this without this text but uh, I decided to put everything not for our sake but for the sake who are who will be uh, watching so that they see that that's in the Bible now let me read that part did I say chapter Chapter 2, verse 13. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. What is the context? It is judgment. 14, 15, 16. Okay? I think I gave already the example of this in, in the topic, vindication and confirmation. Oh, when we all get to heaven. <laughs> so this is a shocking revelation. Many people will not be ready when they face this kind of judgment. That's why, just like in the days of Lot, in the days of Noah, they were not ready. And I believe many people will be shocked because they, they've been hearing this for so many times and for so many longs, and they disregard it because they think that it is not true. And they believe on their pastor or minister or religious leader. And they don't have time to search what this book has been telling to us. That's why shocking for us, it is not. It is our vindication. Yes, that the grace of God is enough that the faith of Jesus is enough, 
that his obedience is enough, that his blood is enough. And we just trust him and believe him and put our life in him. That's why, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I want you to think for a moment and look forward to this event. Do you want to see yourself in this lake of fire? No way. Yes. This is the right time to decide. There are two things in this world. One is that you die once, all right, and live forever. What is the other one? You die, you die twice, and you die forever, right? The first death is when we die, but the second death is this. According to the Bible, this is the second death. Where is that verse? There. This is the second death. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Do you want to die twice? No, we only die once. When we die, then resurrection. But in that, before we can experience that, we need to born twice. Okay, the first born and the born again. We born twice, die once. Okay? Born once, die twice. <laughs> what is our decision? I think letter A, not no such thing as uh, all of the above, or <laughs> all are correct, all right? Born twice, die once. That's the thing that we need to, to experience. So my dear brothers and sisters in Christ and my friend and those who are watching, God has given you the opportunity to decide for him. It is not for me or for these uh, people. It is between you and your God. You think it that way. Because in the end, it is only between you and your God. Let's all rise and sing our closing song, When We All Get to Heaven.
Our Heavenly Father, just like the message of the song, when we all get to heaven, then we will shout and sing and have our voices lifted up in victory. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving us this, revealing us this kind of revelation that in Christ Jesus we can have eternal life. In his blood, we can receive the forgiveness of our sins and of reconciliation. That through his sacrifice, you can call us your sons and daughters, your children. And through him, we can also be a part of the inheritance that you have promised to your people. I pray for those people, Heavenly Father, who are still in the valley of decision. Send your angels to guide them, to give them the strength and the power to say yes to Jesus Christ, to surrender their lives to him. I pray, Heavenly Father, that as we leave this place, may you grant us with your blessings. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Tomorrow evening is the things, third to the last, and the topic is, would you know my name if I see you in heaven? Happy midweek, everyone, and God bless you all.